You know that one measure you just can't seem to master? Let me show you the closest thing I found to a magic bullet, though diligent practice still required. Today I'm going to introduce you to rhythmic hacking. Now I didn't create this technique, I just give it a cool name. My teacher taught it to me, his teacher taught it to him, and I can trace this at least three generations of teachers back to the Paris Conservatory in the early 20th century. So this is a technique that isn't a magic fix to any technique, but is the most powerful strategy I found to learn technique faster, cleaner, and more effortlessly, avoiding performance injuries and giving you a cool, calm, collected performance on the stage. So in this lesson, I'm gonna spend the majority of my time practicing with limited commentary, by my standards, uh, just showing you how I implement this in the practice room. And if you were in here in my studio and I was teaching a one-on-one -on -one lesson, this is what I'd have you do. We'd be trading this idea back and forth. So I'm gonna show you how I practice this. So most of the time is gonna be spent me just demonstrating me practicing this, and then hopefully you can learn it, master it, and one day pass it on to your students as well. Now, today's example comes from one of the advanced etudes from Chad Eby, the Saxophone Academy in-house composer and arranger. And it's a sequenced arpeggiated figure with a little bit of non-diatonic chromatic sequencing. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Now, I don't want to just play it correctly because I have to record this as a demonstration for students. I want to master it. I want it to sound and feel effortless. So enter rhythmic hacking to get the job done. First, let's listen to this a little bit slower so you can more clearly hear the phrase that I'm trying to work out. <laughs> Now, step one, we're going to essentially play at half tempo by instead of having a quarter note pulse, having an eighth note pulse. So two sixteenths per eighth note, one and two and three and. So it'll feel like half tempo. And you're gonna notice we don't play the entire phrase, the entire double time lick all at once. We break it down to little chunks. Little chunks, terrible name for a cereal, great name for a dog food. We use little chunks, little bite-sized bits that our brain can digest not literally, figuratively. So listen again, I'm gonna break it down into a small manageable section before I add the rest. And if this feels a little fast, even at first, slow it down. You have to go at your tempo, not my tempo. Try to find the first starting halftime feel where you can play it relatively clean and relaxed. It shouldn't feel stressful at this point. Now, the next step of rhythmic hacking is we enter variation one phase where we turn the normally notated rhythm into a doubly dotted 8 30 second note. Don't leave. Don't leave. It looks complex, but it's actually quite simple and intuitive. So don't think of the doubly dotted 8 30 second unless your brain enjoys that. Think of a French overture which I'm sure you listen to diligently all the time. Jean-Baptiste Lully. Long, short, long, short, long, short, long. That's variation one. Now, if we were noted to notate that roughly, it would be a doubly dotted eight, 30 second note. Not exactly, but we're after pedagogy here, getting the result, not pedantry, being exact for the sake of being nerds. <laughs> Then variation two is the next step. We reverse the rhythm where we have the short note, essentially a 32nd-ish kind of feel followed by the doubly dotted eighth note, a 
But the easier way to think of that is a Scottish snap, where you have short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. Ba da, ba, ba dee da, do da, dee da, da da, dee. A Scottish kind of snap feeling. If you live in Appalachia, there's some crossover. I guess I have no idea. <laughs> Then the next step is doing both of those variations back to back, the French overture to the Scottish snap, and what we're doing is varying which interval is fast every other time we play through it. Do that several times and then try the tricky bit at the normal tempo. <laughs> magic freaking magic and if you like magic please do give us a thumbs up the little wizard and i would certainly appreciate it and even wizards could use a little dopamine hit now if you're comfortable with that then try that little chunk little chunk in the context of the phrase not going on yet we haven't hit the next little bit the next little chunk but let's try the first little chunk we've done in context <laughs> And if you've followed this channel for any amount of time, you know I don't do tricks or tips, strategies, long-term effective strategies. But if there was one magic trick in existence, this is about as close as it gets. Now, on the latest episode of the Saxophone Academy podcast with my co-host, Dr. Susan Fancher, we actually talk about this technique and a couple of others to help what conquer what we call measure impossible. There was a couple of measures in classical literature or chord change in jazz that just seems to escape you when you bang your head against the wall. We have an entire episode of that just came out this past week. I'll put a link down below to Spotify, but you can list it wherever you cast your pods. Podcasts. So thus far, we've got the first little chunk feeling pretty good. Let's push it. Let's get a little bit adventurous and move it even faster, doing the same thing, the half note even time. Da, 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 da. Variation one. Da, 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 da. Da da, variation two. Da da, da da, da da, da. Let's do this again, but a little bit faster tempo. <laughs> Now let's keep going. So we're going to take the last half of this kind of tricky arpeggiated sequence. And we're going to do the same thing. And I'm not actually going to give contrary and break it down. I want you to just listen and observe. This is just me practicing. I just turned on the camera and practiced it how I would practice. Or if you were sitting in the room with me in a lesson, once I was done yelling and hitting you, I would do this rhythmic hacking exercise with you exactly how I'm practicing in here. <laughs>
Now, if you're feeling saucy, and I am, I hope you are too, let's try it in context and maybe even with the backing track if we feel ready. <laughs> So I actually am truly excited for you to try this out and see this kind of nearly magic idea in your own practice, see if it can help you conquer some of these things you've been having difficulty with. But I want to hear from you, so let me know in the comments below, what is that measure? What is that tricky thing? Is that little bit in the third movement of the Creston Sonata, the, the, the falling thirds? Is it the bridge to all the things you are? What is that little thing that's giving you trouble and you're banging your head against the wall? I want to know. Let's see if rhythmic hacking can help fix it. Really appreciate you being here and watching. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I will see you next week, next Friday, probably. And we're going to have another lesson on a very fun topic I think you're going to like. In the meantime, again, enjoy your weekend. But go practice.